Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law through this channel. I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar channel. Mm -hmm. If anybody's not aware of this, this is a journey of an investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategy called compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each and every return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades, we do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video, we're going to be asking the question, are Squeeze stocks back? And two of the stocks that we were watching, one went up over 1,700% and then the other one went up over 846% uh, in the previous day. And we're also going to be looking at three deep dive questions regarding MMT, LP and FINRA. So stay tuned for that. Before we get started, let's have a look at what's happening in the market. So first of all, headline from Market Watch: Oil price falls for a fourth straight day and uh, traders are weighing up the supply and prospects. So uh, from CNBC earlier on in the day, we could see there was little change. The S&P 500 was slipping from record highs. However, uh, later on in uh, the trading day in the Discord, we did update and that was with regard to the Dow Jones, 260 points showing significant recovery and the markets are now doing a lot better. First update I'd like to provide you is with regard to OSTK. So the news in yesterday was that overstock short sellers lost an appeal over market manipulation. So this is good news here for retail investors and they cannot continue their case with regard to overstock and the leaders forced them into the squeeze through the improper tactics allegedly. So if we have a look at details of what was alleged, the short sellers claimed that they were compelled to buy shares due to a situation known as a short squeeze and attempted to revive their case after it was dismissed by the US District Court for the District of Utah in 2021. So they already lost the case in uh, court for in 2021. They've just lost it again. And over to overstock short squeeze occurred after the digital dividend sparked investors' interest. So remember, this is one potential option for Nextbridge and uh, MMTLP uh, holders uh, in terms of the company doing this potentially as well. I know there has been talk of it. So the inclusion of the div digital dividend forced the sellers to re call the shares and loaned out to short sellers forcing buys to cover their position so we know none of the um, mtlp shares uh, the the shorts were forced to cover but in ostk they were so that's the key difference uh, and uh, comment here from gregory chiggins has stated that uh, better settle mmtlp drop the bs charge against john birder and padakaros with regard to this victory for ostk uh, and another comment here from pocahontas congratulations to ostk shareholders now the short sellers can experience the true meaning in terms of the phase infinite risk so they don't like uh, obviously complying with their contractual ob obligation of infinite risk because that's what they do and the ruling will hopefully set a precedent for all present and future cases in favor of shareholders so uh, the short, short sellers did lose so uh, huge also coming here from patrick byrne huge personality and he stated here again tagging in the news article saying the short sellers lost their lost their appeal over market manipulation so uh, let's what we need now is similar victory for mmtlp let's now ask the question are squeeze stocks back so there was a stock that was called out in our live trading and alert section in the discord tagging in uh, news from wall street bets on reddit and the question here was was this the biggest one day spike tixamal d-r-u-g also known as bright minds biosciences and we can see here it was up in excess of 1700 percent so if we have a look at the chart again that's the chart but i think um what i would like to share with you here is probably uh, i think one of the biggest single green candles i've ever seen in trading history for a long long time and if we have a look at the initial response from the company the company stated here we can see that the management are confirming they are unaware of any material changes in the company's operations that would account for recent increased in market activity however uh, what i am able to share with you in the discord we did pick up uh, news from our fda channel live discord uh, news and alerts and we can see here that firefly neurosciences collabs with bright minds bioscience to analyze data 
from phase one study using AI and FDA cleared BNA technology. So that's the news that we've come we got coming through so I'm not sure why the company are denying that but that's um, uh, come through the other stock I'd like to share with you is Tixamal STEC again another one that we called as a potential short squeeze uh, and at what that time it was up in excess of 846 percent going up very very quickly and uh, finally another one that we looked at uh, yesterday and the day before and I also covered in a previous video was Tixamal WOLF it was up 24 um, percent uh, in the pre-market continued to go up that time it was trading around about 12 just in excess of 12 dollars and uh, again congratulations to uh, some of the members in the discord who did well on that and the other news that i'd like to share with you is with regard to nuclear energy stocks again also called out in our live general chat channel in the discord and this is with regard to news uh, coming through with regard to google de google's deal with small modular reactor smr so keep an eye out on the nuclear stocks i'd like to share with you is three deep dive questions for finra and also regarding mmtlp so what i posted earlier is to be quoted on the otc first of all a company must have a market maker we know that that market maker needs to facilitate trading in the company's stock and also uh, look at the quoting with regard to buy and sell prices normally the company would work with a market maker but we know that didn't happen and that would be for the purpose of filling out a form 211 uh, which we also know was not used and uh, also the market maker would have to have, have conducted due diligence in the company reviewed the financial statements business model and also the legal standing so none of that happened uh, and we know FINRA have confirmed that didn't happen and the question for me for FINRA was uh, we know a form uh, 211 was not used uh, so could FINRA enlighten us as to how many trading symbols have ever been listed on the OTC without a farm 211. So that's the uh, question for Finra. However, there is a, uh, a personality by, by, by the name of Tony De Niro who did not understand that question. He's trying to answer that question and he believes that Finra answered this question uh, in their FAQ. So he states that MMTLP was not a company. We know that and we'd never said it was, but it, we, we're talking about the requirements of the, uh, the using the farm 211. Uh, form 211 and also uh, the requirements for listing on the OTC and why those procedures were not followed. So he's stating all, all this was all answered in uh, FIMRA's FAQ item 4. So let's bring to the attention for Mr. Tono, uh, Tony De Niro, who may not be able to read, uh, that uh, this is FINRA's answer. So at the bottom, they stated that broker dealer must fi uh, file a form with FINRA, uh, a form 21, and in this case, FINRA did not receive that form. Instead, the broker dealer relied, relied on the exemption that permits broker dealers to publish the quotation for unsolicited customer orders. So again, let's go back to the question for the purpose of Mr. Tony, and uh, just so he understands what I was saying, and the the question here was uh, how many tr trading symbols have ever been listed on the OTC without a form 211 so the question here for uh, FINRA is please answer that question and no to Tony Mr Tony then I wrote that question was not answered so uh, please check the grammar and spelling in what you are stating there and also here uh, question two uh, what I stated is after being listed companies must maintain compliance with the reporting standards of the OTC market uh, tier they are listed on. This can include audited financial reports, disclosure of material events, annual fees, purposes also to ensure retail investors are provided with relevant information before they can make their investment decisions. So this, this is my question and do you believe you as in FINRA worked uh, you as the self regulatory organisation FINRA worked with the company at that time Meta Materials to ensure this process was followed uh, in order to allow investors to make a thorough and well informed investment decision. So from what I know, uh, George Palacaros and John Burda stated you avoided meetings, you didn't turn up to meetings, you never worked with a company. So what, what was that? That is my question. So uh, there is um, again another personality by the name of Aaron Chow who is uh, calls himself an elephant and just like an elephant I think he's forgotten what my question is. So I'm not sure if Aaron is good with spelling and grammar as well but he 
may not have understood my question. He believes the question is uh, basically met some materials. I know that, we're not stupid, Aaron, that's not the question. Uh, so uh, trying to be clever and saying, well, the company would be met some materials. I think, let me go back for the purpose of Aaron, who has not understood the complexities of this uh, English language. And the question is, do you believe you worked uh, as the SRO with the company to allow investors to make a thorough and well-informed investment decision. So, uh, Mr. Aaron, uh, I know you're trying to be clever, but as the three markets, uh, Saley has stated, again, Aaron is providing a, an answer to a question that wasn't answered, correct? So maybe Aaron needs to go and read a dictionary. Another worthless comment by a shill, Mr. Elephant Analytics, an elephant who also forgets, and did you write another hit piece? So remember, Aaron is one of those who spends hours and hours of his day uh, his week, his months and his uh, years following MMTLP, which he has got absolutely nothing to do with. And the final question here for you is uh, question three. Listing on the OTC markets requires payment of the necessary fee. We know the company never paid that. And the question again to FINRA is, do you believe making this information public would harm the markets? And if so, why? Uh, so that's the first question. So the second part of this question is, uh, the question is who paid the renewal fee because MMTLP traded for more than 12 months. Uh, and obviously, uh, over to you FINRA. However, I'm not expecting any answers. And finally, thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned.